Okay, this video is to explain how to do the DC node equations tutorial in Circuit Tutor. So I'm on the main menu here. I will click DC node equations. Now this one does not have a pretest or a post test, um, and it doesn't yet have an introductory tutorial, although that will be added later. So we basically have four levels of examples at different levels of difficulty and corresponding exercises at each of those levels from easy, medium, hard, and mastery. And then there's actually two problems that have to be completed at the mastery level. You won't be able to select the problem type, um, but I'm able to do that here. Okay, so first I would always recommend you look at some examples at each level. So let's look at an example at the easy level. And basically it's going to explain the types of equations you need to write, which in this case are uh, mainly KCL equations adding up the currents leaving each node, which is doing here, and it's actually showing you the structure of these equations by drawing little arrows for the currents leaving this node 1, and then it, it color codes each of those currents um, to correspond to the equation term. So this current would be V1 over 2 ohms, this would be V1 minus V2 over 2 ohms, and this would be just the 3 amps of the source. And then you can also cycle through those equations by clicking the next button, and if you want a detailed explanation about each equation, then you click this button, and it will give you a really detailed explanation um, if you need that. Um, and then now it's showing the uh, currents leaving node 2, which are the second equation. And then finally it'll show the currents that are leaving node 3. Now remember we don't write an equation for the reference or the ground node um, in node analysis, so there is no fourth equation because that would basically just be a linear combination of the first three. There is no reason to write that. Um, there is also um, the so-called SOT variable equation, because here you are to calculate two SOT variables, namely the voltage across this resistor with the plus and minus sign, and then the current through this resistor. And so those require, um, here the, the V0 is simply a difference in node voltages, because every voltage across a branch in node analysis is just a difference of voltages, so that's just V1 minus V2. And then I0 is an Ohm's law type of thing, so we have to use V3 minus V2, which is the voltage that drives that current divided by the resistance there of the 7 ohms. So that's just a simple example. And now I'll show you how to actually work one of those exercises using the interface. So I'm going to collect, I'm sorry, click the thing. The first thing it's going to require us to do on this level is to actually identify nodes so that we learn what a node is. So I am required to click on all of the segments of one node at a time and then to click OK here. So for example, if I do this node, it's going to turn that dark gray. There's another segment of that node because all those wires are connected. Therefore, they're all part of the same node. They have the same voltage. So I'll do that here and here. Um, I wouldn't want to include this one for example, that would be wrong. And if I do that, it's going to tell me that's not correct. So I have to deselect that one. And then these are actually the only ones that are connected directly by wires. So that would be the first node, and it colored it black for me. Um, the second node would consist of these three segments. Um, and I click on that, now it's going to color a different color red. Um, and if I forget a segment like here, for example, then it's just going to tell me I have to find all the segments that are connected to that same wire. And then here, there would be actually this one, this one, this one, sorry, this one, this one, and this one. And if I forget, again, it's going to tell me that. And then having uh, identified all the nodes, which are now colored for me, um, I need to also choose a reference node, which I do by placing this little ground symbol that I can move around anywhere on the circuit and just click where I want to put it. I like it to be connected to a lot of things. Um, but that's not really going to matter much here, so I'm just going to put it over here. And, uh, and I could move it. I could put it over here now if I change my mind, um, but I'll just put it back there, I think. And then I click OK. And now I'm ready to actually start the nodal analysis because I've placed my reference node. Remember, that's always the first step in a nodal analysis. If you don't choose a reference node, you can't do the analysis. So it's a good idea to do that, and that's why it actually kind of forces you to do that here. Okay, so here are some instructions about the interface, um, which you may or may not need to read, but if you have any questions, this is a good place to look. And you can always bring that up using this help button if you need to see that again. That's always available to you. So unlike the DC single node pair single loop tutorial, you don't pick a type of circuit analysis because now you're always doing nodal analysis because that's the point of this tutorial. So you don't have the, the box over here to select the analysis type. Instead, what we're going to do is just select the type of equations. And uh, if you have done that other tutorial, that will um, hopefully help quite a bit because this is very similar to that. So we do have these seven different types of equations. 
um, voltage constraint equations, which are needed when you have voltage sources, KCL equations, which we almost always need, um, except if we have uh, a lot of voltage sources. Um, control variables are for dependent sources, and then it depends on what we're asked to calculate, a SOT branch voltage, a SOT branch current, a SOT branch power, or a non-branch voltage. So here, we see that we are asked to find a V0, which is actually the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor, so that's a SOT branch voltage, and the current I0 is the current through this 9 ohm resistor, so that's what we call a SOT branch current. SOT just means that we're trying to find it. It's kind of like an unknown, but it's an unknown that we specifically want to find. We're not trying to calculate all of the voltages and currents here. Just those two items are really what we're after. Okay, so um, first of all, we know that nodal analysis is always based on Kirchhoff's current law. So that's almost always a good place to start is to write some KCL equations. So one of the things that's going to warn me here is that one of the peculiarities is that we like you to have a separate term in your equation for each circuit element. Even if those elements could be combined in series and parallel, um, that's generally not going to be possible in these problems, but if it were, you would still want to have a separate term. Okay. So let's um, decide which node we want to write this for. Remember, we don't usually do this for the reference node, so you shouldn't do that, but let's do it for node 1, for example. So if we think about it, there's three currents leaving that node through this wire, through this wire, and through this wire. In other words, through the current source and these two resistors. Now you say, well, that's actually entering, but that just means it's going to be a negative of a leaving current. So we have to choose the types of terms here. We have a palette of terms that are appropriate to write this type of equation. Um, if we change the type of equation, um, you know, it'll change the palette. So we have the, the palette right now that's for KCL equations. So um, it depends really on, th these are Ohm's law type of things, which are appropriate for the resistors. Um, this one's connected to ground, and so we just need a single voltage divided by resistance. And that, of course, that it shows you that down there at the bottom, or if you hover over it, it tells you that that's what that's for. So that's kind of a hint. Um, we have that, and then this resistor is not tied to ground, and so we need to subtract two node voltages to find its current. Because remember, it's always a difference of voltages that actually drives the current. And then the third current is through an independent current source, so we would need this term just for a fixed current. These other two terms are for dependent sources, which we don't have at this level, so we won't need those right now. And then, of course, the sum of those we know by KCL must always equal zero. After all, we're writing equations, and we know that if we don't have an equal sign, by definition, it's not an equation. So we always have to have an equal sign, exactly one, in the equation, and then the right-hand side will just say is zero. Now, just as in the uh, single node pair single loop, I could, if I want, put the zero over here and the equal sign over here, that doesn't matter as long as it's algebraically correct. Um, so that won't matter at all. So let's add up the currents that are leaving. So the current leaving through this 5 ohm resistor is going to be simply V1 minus zero, so just V1 in other words, divided by 5 ohms. So I fill in the N means that that's an integer value, so I put node 1 there, and that's 5 ohms. And then the current leaving through this resistor will be V1 minus V3. That's the voltage difference that drives that current. So V1 minus V3. And that will be divided now by 5 ohms. And then the current that leaves through the current source, well, this is actually entering. So that means we need a minus sign because the leaving current is the negative of an entering current. So that's minus 5 ohms. And that would be the complete equation. So now if I check that, that was in fact correct. I get the da-da. And it also gives me a little hint that I need three of those equations, and I'm going to need two SOT variable equations. That's all I need is, is five equations in this particular problem. So now I would just repeat that problem for a different node. So let's do it, for example, for V3. And there I'm going to need uh, two resistors that are not tied to ground and a current source equals zero. And I'll do this a little faster here to save time. So that will be V3 minus V1 divided by 5 ohms. That's the current exiting here to the left. And then the current going down through the 9 ohm will have to be V3 minus V2 divided by uh, 9 ohms. And then, again, this is going to be minus 9 amps because that current is actually entering. So that's the second KCL equation. And then the third one would be written for node 2. And again, I need three terms. One is a resistor connected to ground. One is a resistor not connected to ground. And finally, the current source. And that's equal to 0. So the current going to ground here would be V2 divided by 9 ohms, just using Ohm's law. 
And then the current going through here would be V2 minus V3 divided by 9 ohms. Remember, you always go from high to low current to get a current going out. So another high to low voltage, I mean. So it's V2 minus V3, not the other way around. And finally, this current is in fact exiting, so that would be a plus 9 amps because I'm adding the currents that leave the nodes. Now you might say, well, I like to add currents that enter a node. Well, that's perfectly fine. Then you would just basically put a minus sign on each of these terms, and it will still be accepted because it's just the negative of the original equation. It's algebraically equivalent. The only thing that wouldn't be accepted would be to combine resistors in series and parallel into one term, but you actually aren't going to encounter that in this tutorial anyway, so that's not a, a big issue. Okay, so we checked that equation, and now we're done writing our KCL equations. We've done three out of the three, and now we need to do our SOT variable equations. So we see that we have a SOT voltage, our V0, and that's a branch voltage. So we will therefore select SOT branch voltage here. And the V0 is going to equal what? Well, it's just going to be ground or zero minus V1. So essentially, I just need this term. I wouldn't want to use this because I'm not allowed to put a zero in for the uh, integer because that's just usually written as zero. So it's actually going to be 0 minus V1, so it would be written this way. And by the way, if you mess up an equation, you can clear it just here. And if you, if you get stuck in a problem, you can always click Give Up. Um, there's no penalty for doing that, although you will lose the work on this problem, and you won't get credit for it if you give up, obviously. Um, but you'll be given another problem just like it, and your grade will never be reduced for giving up in Circuit Tutor. Okay, um, I won't do that now since I've already done a good bit of work. And finally, I need to find a SOT branch current since there's actually two SOT variables in this problem. So my I0 should equal to, well, what do I need for I0? Um, basically, it's the voltage through the resistor, um, and there's only one non-reference end, so I will use this particular term. Um, and again, that's going to be... Uh, 0 minus V2, so basically a minus sign there, and that will become V2 divided by the 9 ohms, and that will be my SOT current equation. So now I've written all the equations, and I'm basically done with the problem. So I click on our equations, and if I wasn't sure about any of these, um, I can get a detailed explanation to kind of reinforce and make sure I really understand it, because if you're just guessing, that's probably not a good idea because then on an exam you might not be so lucky um, when you work the problem. So it's always good to really understand it that way um, you can be confident about getting the right answer. So here it'll actually show you the same thing it does in the examples, which is these color-coded arrows and explain the equations, and you can get details about those equations. Um, and you can cycle through those if you like. And then finally it colors the nodes, and we're done. So that's it for this level of DC node equations.